Hola, buen día. Carl Martin here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream, YouTube channel and podcast. And uh, you may have seen, uh, because of this thing that's happening for um, British uh, expats, that they may not be able to uh, use their British bank accounts anymore uh, as a residents of Portugal or anywhere else uh, post-Brexit in Europe. Um, the I think the sensible thing to do now is to get banked uh, in the country where you live. And obviously, we're here on Good Morning Portugal. And uh, it's important to get a bank here if you, have, if you haven't already done so. Uh, so we will be talking about best banks. Now, I, I preface all I'm saying here without uh, anybody giving any personal information away. I, you know, I know I shouldn't have to say this, but sometimes in the heat of the moment, in wanting to share what your best bank is you might put your sort code account number and passwords in not but you know what i mean um, don't give too much away but do please be helpful to other people who want to uh, open bank accounts here but might be a little bit overwhelmed by the choice um, some familiar branding you know in, in the form of santander perhaps uh, and then a, 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 a real mystery minefield of like who do i go with uh, bpi bcp Ativo, do I go digital? Do I, do I go for an online account? Uh, and so on. So I would like to know from you who you think the best bank is in Portugal. You don't even have to say you bank there. You just have to maybe say, you know, from your own experience or, um, you know, just give, give, give a brand, give a name of a bank that you found useful. I'll start that process off. I, I um, have experience of both Millennium uh, BCP and, um, oh, that's my phone line. I'm just touching there, fiddling and, and making a buzz on there. It's the biggest buzz maybe today on the live stream. Who knows? Um, and yes, who are you and where are you? We, the comments are a bit quiet this morning. Often people are very um, are quick to say hi, uh, to say hola, bon dia to, to, the, to everybody else. Adrian's done that already this morning. Thank you, Adrian. But where is everybody else? Is it this talk of banking um, that's made everybody clam up, I wonder? Shouldn't talk about money. That's very British, isn't it? Not talking about money publicly. But uh, I encourage you to do so today so that we can come up with this whole expat's choice choice in banks and with the expat's choice charts which we're going to do oh just to answer your question adrian uh, bon dia, como você está? very nice adrian um i think you, you you've been learning uh, that doesn't sound to me like something you've just casually looked up online uh, sounds like you're really learning there adrian who are you learning with how's it going and uh, i have to say to you muito bom obrigado e consigo um and yes yeah, thank you matthew uh, i have a novo branco account uh, or that's pretty novel banker, right? And happily transfer funds from my UK NetWest account at the moment. Brilliant. This is the sort of thing we need to know about. And we'll return to that after the weather and a financial article telling you about what's going on in Portugal right now with public debt, interestingly. Uh, bon dia from Henry Jeffries. Hi, Henry. Bon dia, Carlos, she says to me. Penny over there in the UK as well. Bon dia, Carl. Just wondering if my Santander account in the UK would allow residents in Portugal or the same as? Yes, that's a good question, Penny. And I wonder if you can, given that that bank is well represented both sides of the water, um, whether it is a simple matter of transferring. Santander account holders, can you answer that question? That's a great question this morning. Uh, morning, Millennium are good and they're online. Okay, I'm going to come back to these. This is fantastic. People are already very forthcoming. Good morning to you, Valerie. Good morning to you, Puran. We're going to come back to banking after the weather. Um, yes, the British don't like to talk about money, but they do like to talk about the weather. So here goes Lisbon, 20 degrees at the moment and mostly cloudy, rising to 26 degrees and a cloudy day in the capital today. Better weather coming for tomorrow, Friday and the weekend. Sunny weekend, sunny weekend in Porto as well. Uh, divine timing. So you can have a sunny weekend in Lisbon and Porto and Coimbra, funnily enough. Great coincidence. Um, is there such a thing? 16 degrees in Porto at the moment, though, and overcast. 21 degrees to look forward to today, but it will be a rainy day in Porto, giving way, as I said, to some uh, cloudy sunshine tomorrow and a sunny weekend with uh, highs of 21 and 22 degrees in Porto, Coimbra. Uh, Porto, just been reminded, is that the Manchester of of Portugal? Is it the Boston for you American listeners? Is it the Boston of um, Portugal? I quite like those comparisons and I know they're a bit awkward, but it gives people an idea of what the weather's like and maybe even the culture. Uh, and that's why I say I think Porto is like the Manchester or Sheffield of, of Portugal. Coimbra, 17 degrees at the moment and overcast. It's pretty overcast all over the country at the moment. Um, and it's going to be 22 degrees the high in Coimbra and another sunny weekend to look forward to uh, with highs of 23 and 24. Faro, overcast, would you believe, at the moment? 
and uh, 27 degrees. Cloudy day today there. Uh, sunny, a little bit of cloud tomorrow, 27 degrees, and a weekend of 26 degrees centigrade. Uh, what's that, 52? 82 Fahrenheit for you Fahrenheiters. Uh, who prefer um, the, your bilingual weather report in that language, <laughs> Fahrenheit? Um, I would. I want to say as well, actually, because uh, we had a a, a rather challenged um, uh, Hola Americas show last night. Um, we did the paranormal show the night before, and I think there were some ghosts left in the machine, and uh, we really had some t technical challenges. It was all over the place. At one point, um, Adam. Our occasional listener, Adam, uh, there in Porto, thought that Jimmy Chew, the, the um, Good Morning Portugal puppy, had chewed through a cable. Um, and then the, the green screen failed, all sorts of problems. But we had a great evening, part of which was if I go now to the we weather in Viano de Castello, this was the um, a question from um, Zander in Texas asking if Ponta de Lima had, a, if, if, if it was true about the um, microclimate of Ponta de Lima, um, up there in the north, way up in the north of Portugal. And I'm interested to know who's been there. Uh, people, you folks who are here in Portugal, have you been up to the green coast? And I'm going to show you some pictures of the green coast because it's it's so delightful and I think so unknown and such a well-kept secret. And we'll return to money matters in just a moment. But Viana de Castelo at the moment, uh, the district thereof where you will find Ponte de Lima, is 17 degrees and mostly cloudy. Excuse me, just going to have a little sip of water. Piri Piri still attacking me. Um, that, that, <laughs> I had some Piri Piri last night, and um, and yeah, and um, it was it sort of it was part of. It wasn't a technical problem. It was a kind of health a health problem uh, in the way. It's kind of weird. But yes, Vienna de Castello at the moment, seventeen degrees. Okay, so a little cooler than other parts of Portugal. A bit cloudy. Uh, Twenty one degrees to look forward to today, and a rainy day basically tomorrow cloudy and 20 degrees and sun on saturday and still a very comfortable 21 degrees on saturday 22 degrees on sunday but check this out okay and you podcasters please look this up uh, i am looking at a website here and this is part of why i think it's such a well-kept secret it's very difficult to find pictures of the Costa Verde, the green coast of Portugal. And here are some for you. Uh, if uh, you podcasters listen, uh, are listening in and, want, uh, and needing pictures, go to iberian-escapes.com, iberian-escapes.com, where these beautiful pictures are coming from. Check out this town, Eshbozenda, which apparently has a legendary cake, the name of which I forget, but look at it. These old windmills on the coast, obviously, you know, a bit of a clue to what the weather can be like. A bit windy there, a bit blustery, but some people like that on a beach, don't they? Those of you who like a, you know, a Welsh beach or an Irish beach or sometimes, you know, Cornwall and Devon can get a bit blustery. But look at these, these dwellings here, fine Portuguese construction dating back to the 4th century BC, no less. And look at this, the beaches of Eshbrizenda. Look at, isn't that lovely? Uh, wonderful Portuguese boardwalks, as you'll see up and down all the country. And um, terrific pictures, a lovely part of the country. Who's been there? Look at that wonderful um, little estuary going out to the water there, going out to the Atlantic. So I just wanted to share that with you, um, iberian-escapes.com for that. Thank you so much. Isn't that lovely? Um, and now on to the matter of um, banks in Portugal and your best bank. Um, and um, we I, I actually I've, I've got a form I, I've got a like a nomination form and again please don't put anything personal in here but I've put a link in to the comments there it is a, it is a, 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 a basically you could nominate the, the bank that you think is best and what I'm trying to do and I want to do this with beer wine best camera in Portugal this is the expat's choice of what is the what are the best things according to the people who use them not to according to a paid journalist or an unpaid journalist um who might have an affiliate link and guilty as charged you know i do have affiliate links i'm not knocking it but i want this to, this particular thing to be the expat's choice coming from good morning portugal and it's an ongoing chart so at any moment and we're not gonna have an annual awards or anything because you know, again i think that's just a snapshot in time we will have charts that we will refer to from time to time. It'll be like Alan F Fluff Freeman. Okay, pop pickers, straight in at number one there. It's Millennium BCP, all right, not off. You know what I mean? It's going to be that sort of thing. So we can check at any given time who the top bank is, according to you folks who 
are actually using these blooming institutions or drinking the wine or the beer. OK, so I will add new categories. But for today, that link will take you to the expats, expats choice for banks. Please no passwords in there. Just PM those to me. Only kidding. Right. So um, <clears throat> this um, public debt um, story. I keep meaning to not use the word story, but it's just sunk in like so many things do when the media and popular culture repeats it over and over again. Uh, here we go from the Portugal resident, just to give you a snapshot before we go back into the personal matter of personal banking, public debt here in Portugal. Um, look at those. Do you know it's a 500 euro note? Um, never had one of those. <laughs> Funnily enough, and I imagine if you if you hand over a 500 euro note for a coffee and a pastel de nata, you're going to get a strange look. Or are you? Maybe in Portugal, typically, nobody will bat an eyelid and you'll just get your 498.50 change on a little plate. Uh, and no one, no one will bat an eyelid. Public debt hits 133.8% of GDP, a historic record. Um, not surprising. Uh, this uh, article from yesterday from the Portugal resident, Portugal's public debt has skyrocketed in the last six months of pandemic from 114% of GDP to 133%, nearly 134%. It's, a, it's an historic, good writing there, uh, an historic record, explain reports, e higher even than the last year of the Troika when public debt hit 132.9%. Even so, the key indicator of the health of public finances is doing better than the government's own forecast in the supplementary budget in June when it saw public debt soaring to 134.4 in 2020, says TSF uh, News Radio, Radio News. Uh, reasons for the descent are the measures brought in to help the country through weeks of paralysis during lockdown, as well as additional budgetary and reinforcement of the SNS Public Health Service. Warns TSF. Uh, the 1.2 billion loan to tap, however, <laughs> has not been included in that figure. Just that mere matter of 1.2 billion and in inverted commas alone. Do people suspect that's not coming back? Um, that's not been included in the figures uh, in the second trimester calculations and won't be until the next evaluation in December. I think they're breaking something gently here, right? Uh, Portugal's new debt record keeps the country at the bottom of the heap in Europe, doing better only than Italy and Greece. <laughs> which which is um, a little bit typical, isn't it? Uh, there, there is that pig's classification, isn't there? Portugal, Italy, Greece and Spain. Uh, but we are the top of the pig's table. It's all about statistics, isn't it? And how you can interpret data. We're top of the table, everybody, um, ahead of Italy and Greece. Uh, well on the way to 150% of GDP in Italy, according to Bloomberg. And Greece looking like 200% of GDP. What is to become of us, folks? Is it not the time for... Um, universal basic income as a way of helping people and the recognition that this is all made up anyway. All this money is made up, isn't it? And Portugal has a massive gold reserve. Actually, when you do the maths on it, it's not that much money per person. But there's all that gold that apparently they don't quite know what to do with. And this, this monetary financial system is not working for us. But I don't want to get too philosophical about that. Um, you know, who is the money? When the money is is borrowed from an international, the International Monetary Fund, the global bank, banks, who is it being borrowed from? Who are these people who might be holding the world to ransom? And, you know, if, if it were if it were you or I, and I'm going to take a bit of a punt here and assume that you're quite a compassionate, humane um, person, um, you know, of, of perhaps Christian values or whatever your personal code is, and you have given or lent somebody some money and you recognize now that you are in a pandemic situation and this person has lost their job, do you just keep badgering them for the money? Or do you come to some sort of other arrangement? I mean, human to human, we come to other arrangements, don't we? We recognize the reality and we see, you know, another human being there and we adjust accordingly. But not if you're a faceless bank, you don't, do you? Albeit, you know, fair play, there have been mortgage holidays and so on. But those are going to end. And um, as people have pointed out, you know, these um, mortgage holidays don't let you off. They just pushed the debt further down the street. The, you know, it's like it's it's almost as if it, they're always going to win, right? Um, and it just it seems to me like we we've grown up with it and we accept it and we accept that money is made from money and you know usury, uh, you know, exploiting money and people for personal gain is just a normal thing now. It was seen as a pretty evil crime actually at times in human history. It's completely normal now in the culture we live in. Uh, and I know I'm sounding like Wolfie Smith, you know, now you know. Uh, the people's 
um, the People's Front of Anadia or, or Avera or whatever. But it, if you think, if you look at it, it doesn't really our money system doesn't make any sense. And untold misery is being felt by, as I always say, by people on a very individual, personal and private ba basis, while all these big figures are talked about. I mean, really, who knows what 133.8% of GDP actually means? That's just a big statistic to make you and I go, oh, that sounds a lot. This sounds terrible. And then, you know, it, it's just dealt with on. An, we, we have to deal with that, obviously, in our individual lives in the best way we can. But we are in a really silly system. I, I just don't think it's fit for purpose. I will stop ranting now. Back in May, when the effects of the pandemic were becoming all too clear, the European Commission recommended that member states took all necessary measures to support their economies. Now, that's the sort of thing that a Brexiteer would say, that's why we're leaving. Um, you know, the European Commission issues, these people are paid to say, um, we recommend that the member states take all necessary measures to support their economies. Thank you for that, bureaucrats. That's really helpful. Since then, Brussels has devised an unprecedented programme of recovery funding, and there is a further story to go to, which I won't do now, but you can do that at portugalresident.com. Uh, very happy to receive your views on the monetary system. Is it time for universal basic income, etc.? These are the views only of uh, Carl Munson speaking here. Very interested in your views as well. So please shout them out in the comments and let's find out more about um, which you think is the best bank in Portugal for a moment and say a few good mornings um, to people as well. So Puran Babu uh, is here, everybody. Uh, good morning, Puran, um, and says, I have a great voice. I, <laughs> thank you, Puran. It's a, it's a little bit dodgy at the moment, I have to say. Uh, I must uh, do more honey, lemon, cider vinegar, etc., and take a little bit better care of my voice, I think. Um, so, yes, um, or is Santander all the same as other banks? I think that's a supplementary to your earlier question, about whether Santander bankers um, in UK or elsewhere in the world can can just carry on their banking with the Santander chain here in Portugal. I think I, I, my feeling is not, you know, they are the same brand, but you'll have to set up. It's not a it's not a trans border account um, in that sense. I don't think Penny happy to be challenged on that. Uh, Valerie Spencer Bex, good morning to you, Valerie of the Spencer Bex Estate Agency. Morning, Millennium are good. And their online banking is very clear. Um, the DNA sample is a bit much, though, isn't it, Valerie, that you have to input each time on your phone? Flipping heck. I mean, you know, I, I've got the comparison of UK online and app-based banking. And I do find that the Portuguese, you know, the inroad, the on-ramp to it is, you know, you've got to give letter number five of the of the code that got sent to you and then number seven and then give letter number two of your NIF and then give your grandmother's maiden name all that it's a bit it's a bit um yeah I, I agree with you that you know the online banking is good once you're into it but the, the security seems overly complex to me but then a lot of security seems overly complex to me um in our in the world we live in uh Kaiser Gerard are okay this is great Valerie thank you so top of the chart um is millennium for Valerie and I'm sure you've spoken to a lot of people, obviously, in the business you're in about banking. Uh, Kaiser Geral, I must add that to my selections, actually, of expats' choice. Uh, they're OK, but their online banking is not great. And here we go. The 300-foot barge pole award goes to Montepio. So on a personal level, um, Valerie would not be using, by the sound of it, but I would like to see her using an ATM with a 300-foot barge pole. Uh, so <laughs> not meant Montepio. Kaiser Geral are OK and Millennium are good, according to Valerie. That's really helpful information, and let's keep furnishing this expat's choice of the banks. If you will, please help me with that. Uh, Porto, here we go, is the San Fran of Amer of, of, of Portugal. Okay, Jeff, um, I love that. And I, I, so I think people do like these comparisons. So there we go. Porto is not the Boston, it's the San Francisco, uh, for, you, for those of you who will understand the North American comparisons i still got for myself manchester manchester birmingham or sheffield for porter um have a millennium account or have had a millennium account by the sound of it gary but they closed the branch in alvaz al so might have to change can't understand why it was very busy well-used branch internet banking i suppose i suppose you're right too there gary just gonna have another sip of water folks. I need a little jingle, don't I? Maybe I could play Handel's water music whilst I have a little sip of water there. And I think this is a this is another numbers game thing. You know, ba banks, let's face it, there was a time when you could have been forgiven for thinking that banks existed for your 
Um, convenience and pleasure. A place to store your money to stop bandits from taking it. A place to put your gold uh, for safekeeping. Um, and then they would give you bits of paper. And then we started trading those bits of paper. That's how it all began, right? Um, loosely speaking. Loose changely speaking. And um, now um, it's cl clear to see, isn't it? And, and this has been happening for the last 20 or 30 years in the UK. It's all about numbers. And, and like if, if, if a bank in a little town doesn't make the numbers required by distant boardroom bankers who've never been to that town and they look at the numbers and go, well, that little, you know, I used to live in a, I've lived in a few lovely little towns in, in the UK. Bishop's Castle in Shropshire, Ashburton in Devon, little towns. Remote bankers, you know, people in boardrooms look at the numbers, go, well, that's not worth keeping open, is it? Never mind about all the old folks who, who've got used to it, who've had a bank account there for 100 years, um, who, who used to know the bank manager and have lunch and shake hands and do things like that and talk to each other like human beings. No, shut it down. It's not making enough money. It's costing us a lot of money to keep that bank open. They can use the internet. Let them use the internet or whatever. We don't care. Um, or that's how it would appear anyway. So perhaps that's what's happening now in Portugal. Uh, small branches um, and banks are shutting. And I'm sorry to hear that, Gary. And that's making you reconsider. And hopefully this whole process here um, is helpful to you uh, about which bank to use uh, over here in Portugal. Um, and thank you for that feedback. I, too, yes, have experience of a millennium BCP and Urubic recently. Um, Urubic, I have to say, are great. And and because I have a small, it, I live in, a, a, in the last place we lived in, small town, only bank in the village, as it were, um, went to open an account, had lovely Portuguese lessons as part of the deal um, with the two lovely ladies who work in the bank, and it was personal, and it was helpful. And it's not about Eurobic, it's about the service I got, and now I'm a Eurobic customer because I could walk there and um, I could talk to people. And, it's, and, and that's the reason I would recommend Eurobic. But I, what I'm recommending is that branch and those people, but still... Urubic, you know, generally speaking, in a corporate sense, pretty good. Millennium BCP, no big problems to report with that. But I have to say, my favorite thing when I was first here was to have a Revolut card. R-E-V-O-L-U, R-E-V-O-L-U-T, Revolut, uh, the unicorn of the finance world. They made a fortune by, by basically... Um, destroying the banking model and making it all easier so with with revolute and i know other systems are available like this and we'll have a quick look at a, a great article from expatica if we have the time but um the um the, the these new digital banks the app-based banks revolute is fantastic charge it up with your uk bank account i mean i'm not going to be able to have one of those soon if all the reports are true <coughs> excuse me but um you charge it up with you with any not just your uk bank but charge it up with your your traditional bank account then you've got a card which gets sent to you and you use that card wherever you want and that revolute has been fantastic in the first couple of years but you know i see myself as a, a portuguese banked person now and i use the revolute thing occasionally but all the other features of it are fantastic as well you know like transferring money making payments you can even trade in other currencies with revolute you know it's a multi-currency account as well and it's how it, you know if, if we're dealing with the evil of banking as i see it um, you know, it, they are doing it well. They do, they're innovating and they're creating something that the dinosaur banks just don't seem to be able to do. And as much as we are supposed to be in a digital paperless world, my other experience of Portuguese banking is, is this, this crazy thing of like signing pieces of, 20, like I said the other day, 27 signatures to open a bank account. You know, we, we this, this is digital times, folks. Your signature should be the same if you do it 27 times. So why not just do it once and let the digital, let the, you know, let the, the computing power do the rest in this promised digital world. But no, as, as usual, um, digitization computers have meant more work for everybody, not less. <laughs> a bit ranty this morning, aren't I? A blessed morning to all present here and everywhere else. That's a lovely blessing. Thank you, Grasser, uh, for joining us this morning. Blessed morning to all present here and everywhere else. That's lovely, isn't it? Uh, a, a lovely check and balance. Nice banking pun there. Two banking puns. Uh, a nice check and balance to all this financial talk, Grasser. Thank you so much for that. Um, you think you had technical problems. What happened, Gary? Um, a few sparks in the man cave last night, uh, the gas bar. Uh, Paul Williams, hola, bon dia, from a soaking and soggy Southampton. Such a shame. We need banks. But hey, -ho, a man after my own heart there, Paul. And sorry to challenge your um, 
your your Keats answer yesterday, of course. The season of uh, this is a I, I very rarely have to publish an apology, but I feel I need to here with Paul. Um, the season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. We read out an autumn poem um, by um, Fernando Pessoa uh, yesterday, uh, which prompted me to talk about the season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. I wondered who that was, and Paul said it's Keats. Absolutely right. And I challenged him on air thinking it's not Keats. I thought it was A.E. Hausman. Um, and uh, absolutely right, Paul. So, uh, yes, I'm still tugging me forelock in, in your poetic direction. And uh, the translation was um, Vague Wind, which caused a little bit of mirth and merriment in some of the YouTube comments yesterday. Um, stayed for a week. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I, I agreed. Blooming Banks. Uh, stayed for a week in Esposenda. He continues. It's a stunning area. So Paul has been to the Green Coast. Um, got to be got to be. Um, on your list of places to go in Portugal. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with your Dutch name here, Douglas. Duke Hugers. Um, Welsh beach is cheap sandblasting. It can be like that at times. It can be like that at times, can't it? But I know people um, who, who love to run on a Welsh beach. They grew up there, this particular person I'm thinking of. Um, and um, it is bracing and beautiful in its own way. I mean, it's not a place to go and sit for the day with your sandwiches, is it? And enjoy the sunshine. A Welsh beach is for blowing the cobwebs away, I think, often. But then again, you do get those occasional beautiful um, summer days on a Welsh beach. And I think it's not quite as bad as that on the green coast of Portugal. But, you know, be 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 um, aware of vague wind. Um, bon dia todos from a very damp Manchester, Claire and Steve, from the, from the Porto of UK. <laughs> That's the Claire and Steve. Good morning to you guys. How are you doing? Um, Valerie Spencer Beck says they will. I only had a 50 year. Oh, this is about my comment about if you hand over a 500 euro note for your pastel de natra and coffee, they, they will change it. I, I only had a 50 euro note, says Valerie, and didn't realize until I bought my coffee and pastel de natra. She told me to come back and pay for it when I had something else or when next in was a cafe I go to fairly regularly. There you go. Lovely Portuguese uh, vignette snapshot. That's how they roll here. Uh, hola, bon dia, Torush, uh, from Eugene. Hey, Eugene, how are you? Uh, good morning to you, mate. <laughs> Any vague wind this morning? Um, Dave and Debbie Wynell, hola, bon dia, looking out over the Ria Formosa in Oliao. Sun's just coming out. What a beautiful scene there. Lovely pictures, you know, these mental images of Portugal, Portuguese culture this morning. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for that one, Dave and Debbie. Uh, governments can print money. In these financial circumstances, unlikely to create inflation. Yes to basic universal income, says Penny. I believe, you know, they, they are um, uh, trialling it in Spain. It's been trialled in a few places. That best of um, uh, presidential candidates, Andrew Yang. I don't know if you're aware of him, but, uh, you know, obviously the debate in America is red and blue, polarised, this or that. And there doesn't seem to be any nuance in um in other candidates, you know, with interesting ideas. And there are other candidates with interesting ideas, but they are like a sideshow in America, aren't they? With no real chance of, of any success, maybe just informing the debate a little bit. I don't know. But Andrew Yang is one of them. And he he's definitely talking about, I think, $1,000 uh, for every citizen. He calls himself the numbers guy. You know, he's got the numbers to back it up. He's not just some sort of um, airy, fairy, um, liberal uh, don't really care about the money sort of bloke. He, he's an economist, I think, and, you know, money guy. Um, and he thinks UBI would be a great um, thing to have in the United States. And um, it may well be coming. Uh, I think it is being trialed all over the world. And, and it, 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 if governments are to help people uh, in terms of benefits and handouts, it's got to be the easiest way, hasn't it? To just, you know, from, a, from an economic point of view, uh, if nothing else, to just give everybody an amount of money paid into their bank account uh, you know the, the best bank account that they may be, may have chosen uh, using our expats choice charts here but um you, you what you don't want to be going into a load of bureaucratic um means testing do you and form filling and bureaucracy although yes maybe people do um because it's a career as well isn't it of course you know being in local government um so that would be, that would be a bit of a blow to to people who make their living from processing other people's business but um just give everyone an amount of money um and pay it straight in without any questions and added layers of bureaucracy etc i think would be the best way forward uh, or at least an interesting experiment for humanity uh, piketty um not i'm not sure who that is has been putting forward some compelling ideas for economic reform would like to know more adam 
Adam is a well-read and uh, intelligent fella. Uh, and he's um, <laughs> he's outclassed me there with a reference I don't understand. I would, I, I'd like to hear more. Um, you had me at economic reform there, Adam. Uh, Penny says, bring back Citizen Smith. Wolfie Smith was a TV character uh, in the 70s, 80s of the UK, uh, who was the leader of the, was it Tooting? The People's Liberation Front of Tooting, I think, a, a, a South London suburb. Um, I don't think it was successful, Penny, was it? The show was, but the idea wasn't. Um, the closest we had in British politics was <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn, of course. Uh, getting too politicky this morning. I'm off to do something cheerful. <laughs> We've lost Valerie. We've lost Var Valerie to the politics. Um, we have to do this occasionally, Valerie. <clears throat> you know, as much as I would like to um, not talk about it, I can't help. <laughs> Yanis Var Here we go. Yanis Varoufakis has put forward a progressive party. Fantastic bloke. Uh, that's pretty small just yet, which calls for economic reform, among other things. Uh, and, um, yeah, what a great thinker he is. I would put him in the same kind of uh, league as Andrew Yang, as, you know, somebody who's really thought about it, um, who is from the world of economics, who understands these things, and who is hated, I suspect, by the, um, the you know, the, the, the finance elite of the world who who have things a certain way, obviously, for, for, for personal and corporate benefit. And along come these young guns uh, who want to change things, who the people actually, I think, listen to and, and have sympathy with. Andrew Yang, Yanis Varoufakis, and presumably the Piketty you mentioned before. Going back to the specifics, thank you, Pretty. Good morning to you. Uh, Millennium Bank is good. Oh, this is a thing, isn't it, about uh, Portuguese banks. Monthly fees. Um, pretty much uh, unknown, I think, in the UK now. And I don't know wherever else you're from. Um, but uh, over here, you're yeah, eight, eight euros a month, I think, and then some little fees as well on top of that. So you are looking at um, being charged for your banking in Portugal. Uh, there is a monthly charge, as Pretty says there. Uh, Banco CTT do not charge a monthly fee. That's good to know. But they're very slow when you go in, especially in Fundal. So CTT... It's the post office and it is their post office banking service. I tried to open a business account with them and they, as far as I know, and at the time, they only do personal banking at CTT. So thank you for all of this. Uh, excellent insider information, folks. That's what it's all about on Good Morning Portugal. People helping people, uh, expats helping expats, immigrants helping immigrants. We'll come back to that debate. Uh, B <laughs> BPI and Celta has been a fantastic support for us over the past five years so roy thank you for that roy russell and shout out to the folks at uh certa's uh bpi that's really good to know um it is also being oh no look it just makes no sense does it banks in local areas that people love that i know say the say the distant border and bankers let's shut the thing unbelievable but glad to hear, Roy, that you've had some great service there and presumably that's helped you as you've settled in Portugal. Um, is it too early for a little aqua tent? Carl, never. Never, Yuji. What a silly question. Crack it open, mate. Let's go. While we're, while we're talking about these big issues. Uh, Linda thinks that Coimbra is the Oxford of Portugal. Yes, Linda, I completely agree. And I think I can see what she means. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Oxford. Uh, of Portugal, that would be Coimbra. I'm liking that comparison. Uh, back to Doug Douglas. Uh, we used to have four banks in Neff in a small village. Now none. This is the shape of things to come, folks. Uh, I think we have to get used to this. Sadly, um, yeah, but that's rubbish. That is, <laughs> that is rubbish, isn't it? Um, you know, some of us here um, have a memory of things called bank managers, like human beings that you could talk to, that would even that <laughs> they weren't about. Computer says no um, algorithms or whatever they do banking on now. Because you, you, you feel that, don't you? You feel that when you talk to someone in the bank now, they are just merely um, a translation machine that sits between you and the banking mothership. So they'll put your details in, tickety, tickety, tick. tick um, the computer says no, sorry. And there's nothing that he can do about it. But there was a time, folks, when there were, used to be a bank manager in there, maybe in a suit, perhaps sometimes in a tweed jacket. Um, who would know your name, might shake your hand. You might you might even go out for lunch with them if you were discussing a big deal or groveling to get more of an overdraft or a loan or something like that. And they, I think, if I remember rightly, they would be able to take a punt on you and based on things like your standing in the community or just their prejudices or whatever, but they could make a human decision. Can you believe that, that that used to occur in banking, that people made human decisions? Incredible. 
Uh, in, oh, Pete. Good morning, Pete. Uh, morning from a misty Castaneda de Pera. We use Novo Banco. It used to be called BES. And despite all their corruption in the news, they are good for us. <laughs> That's great to hear. Beautifully put as well, Pete. That's fantastic. So uh, a tick there for Novo Banco. What bank is best to have your UK pension paid into? Who does that? Who who has a UK pension paid into their bank here? And where is that working successfully? Please um, tell us and let Dave and Debbie know. Uh, bon dia, I hear good things about Active or Bank. No fees. So that's where the action is, it would appear, in um, personal banking in Portugal, is the banks that are, are not um, charging people on a monthly basis are the ones that... Uh, I suppose people who are opening new banks will be, be flocking to those. And hopefully those boardroom bankers that I mentioned uh, will see this and think paying people to look after their money as if we don't make enough from it already um, has to go. You know, it does have to go, doesn't it? It's so old fashioned charging people to keep their money. Um, so there we go. Um, we hopefully will find out who all the no fee bankers are. Revolut, the digital bank, you, you, it doesn't cost anything to um, have a a Revolut card unless you pay for the premium services you know and that's 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 the acceptable model now isn't it freemium free at the basic level if you want extras you pay for them i think that's i think that's one of the good things that's happened um in business and that's a thanks in in great part to the internet i think and the digital world uh joe johnson sandblasting you should try the coast in holland holland down past the hague <laughs> a very personal recollection there by the sound of it of um <laughs> life on the beach down past the Hague as far as sandblasting goes thanks Joe good morning to you good morning to Ty as well uh we use Eurobic in Ancien oh this is really personal this is fantastic Carlos speaks very good English and very patient with the expats <laughs> you have to be don't you when you don't speak the language then the personal service and language skills of the staff of a specific um bank may become more important yeah absolutely Absolutely right. And I, I, like I said, Urubic was great for me in, in um, Korea because they used to teach me Portuguese and they could speak English as well. Um, but, um, yeah, mate, it, this, is, this is what it comes down to. And we're in that dynamic, aren't we? The things we appear to love as consumers are the things that <laughs> are, being, are being done away with by the corporations. Funny old world. And um, on that note, get rid of usury, uh, says Owen. It, it doesn't... It's 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 horrible, isn't it, Owen? But we've grown up in that world where it's just acceptable to to exploit people's need and make a profit out of that. Disgraceful. And this is the sort of politics I think that Valerie can't bear on the show. Um, but um, I think these things need to be said. Where you're not going to hear this on Sky News, are, are you? You're not going to hear Kay Burley saying, "I think usury is disgusting." <laughs> Chancellor, what do you think of that? Uh, it's not going to happen. Bon dia, Carl Munson. I've just logged on. This might have been asked already. Apologies if so. Are we going to lose our UK bank accounts or is it just scare tactics? Now, that is a great question, Mark. <clears throat> a question, Mark. Um, I um, I think that, that it, it looks to me like that is going to happen. Uh, and I say that because it's it, it's the new law, isn't it? It, it? Is that the with the exit of Brexit, the, the European um, free trade you know, agreements, how banks have been able to operate um, are ending basically in 100, is it 99 days time now? Um, so it's it looks like it's in the post. It makes sense that it's in the post. And I am hearing also of people being told, you know, I, I know somebody um, who has been told by uh, Barclay Card they can't have, if they live in Portugal, they, they can't and shouldn't have an account. So I, I think it's beginning to happen. Um, <laughs> Whether it's a scare tactic or not, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Project Fear, you know, <laughs> it, it, I don't know. All, all, so much of it to me seems to be like a kind of you know a minor form of terrorism and fear mongering. Um, and you know, it come, that comes down to sort of a, like a personal position in life, isn't it? As you know, whether you receive it as that or not. Um, I, I don't. I don't think it is scare tactics. Uh, this this news story. Um, but that said. Um, we do make better consumers if we're in a state of fear. And I think the corporations recognize that <laughs> and marketers recognize that as well. <laughs> that, that, that was, that was um, I don't know if that was a useful um, answer to your question there, Mark, and others in the comments may be able to um, 
deal with that better than I just did. Uh, these handouts are known as helicopter drops. Um, <laughs> it conjures up a nice image of cash falling from a, an aircraft. <laughs> Douglas, um, say more. Um, Adam Freeman, nice link there about uh, capital in the 21st century. Thank you for that resource, Adam. As I said, learned man, well read. Um, and um, he's putting some great links in there. Thank you for those, Adam. Uh, bon dia from Pavor de Vajim. Oh, so you are up north. And that is the um, green coast we've been talking about. It all makes sense now, Mark. Now have a verbal agreement on long-term rental. Contract being drawn up. Should be living permanently in Portugal um, by mid-November. Yes. And that's another thing uh, we need to have a jingle for. Perhaps the Portuguese national anthem. Uh, we can play that each time somebody makes their home here. Happy days. Good for you, Mark. Glad to hear it. Uh, congratulations. Um, let me see. <laughs> well read. I was well read. Very good. After an hour. After an hour, an hour on Farrow Beach, well read, R-E-D. I thought that was a political reference. Um, I was well read after an hour with Jeremy Corbyn, but uh, <laughs> no, an hour on Farrow Beach there. Thank you. More links from Adam. Cheers, Adam. And uh, Pretty says, Varoufakis speaks. <laughs> got to be careful how you say that. Varoufakis speaks of a digital universal basic income as a solution. It makes sense, doesn't it? You know, and and you and you would imagine, wouldn't you, if if governments are about controlling people, it does make quite a lot of sense to have digital, <laughs> universal basic income. So maybe that's why it will come eventually. Um, so uh, I don't know. Why I'm laughing. That's just a terrible vision of the future. Uh, what's UK? <laughs> what UK pension says, Penny? Again, I don't know. Why I'm laughing. Sorry, Penny, but that is the way you tell them. Uh, basically, as you know, Carl. This is not helping my throat or voice, everybody. You're all making me laugh far too much again this morning. As you know, Carl, every Thursday here in Ireland, everyone makes their way to a field to shout obscenities. Uh, an errant pig. So I better get going. Yes, Eugene, go for it, mate. Um, if it wasn't for the Good Morning Portugal or Good Evening Portugal live stream, I wouldn't know about this thing that happens in Ireland every Thursday where people go and shout uh, obscenities uh, to naughty pigs as a way of stress relief and um, what is the what is the name for it in irish uh eugene this 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 system presumably that it's, that's been going on for centuries in ireland uh that is a, a little known secret outside of the country but have a great time <laughs> yes you better get going enjoy uh, poor pig uh, mark again does anyone have their uk pensions paid into an fx account uh such as transfer wise we'll leave that hang in there uh mark and uh, see if anyone does and that is going to be the big concern isn't it that this, if people are having their whatever income, including pensions, um, paid into a UK bank account, how can that be managed uh, in the future? Uh, and you would think, wouldn't you, therein lies a great opportunity for a, a digital bank, a trans-border bank, or, or even a Portuguese bank. There's a lot of money to be um, funneled into the country, isn't there, by Brits who can no longer have British bank accounts. You would think, they might make it easy in, in uh, any other industry and, you know, not, like hospitality, you know, you, you innovate and you change according to customer needs, don't you? Banks seem really slow at that stuff. I, I don't know why. Um, it's just just the way it has been, isn't it? And, and that's why it's the digital companies have come along and shaken it up so effectively. But come on, Portuguese banks, reach out to these Brits who are going to be unbanked in Britain and say, look, we'll make it easy for you. Just just come in, sign 300 documents, and the jobs are good. <laughs> so lots of lovely links being shared in the comments. Fantastic this morning. Lo lovely to see all the crosstalk. Oh, while we're about it, um, Palavra do Dia is uh, banking, which is bancario, um, uh, which, which is the best translation I could find, bancario. Um, it depends on the bank, says Mark, and whether it's a personal or business account. Best to check with your bank directly. I'm not sure what that's an answer to, but um, that hopefully will make sense to somebody. Uh, worth a read. That link says pretty interesting insights and suggestions from Yanis Varoufakis. I think she just wants to have me keep saying Varoufakis uh, <laughs> this morning. Uh, we have a Barclays current account and a Halifax credit card, but neither is communicating any termination requirements. We wait to see what happens. Yeah, so, you know, far be it from me, to worry people you know the, the 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 idea this morning is to help you find a decent portuguese bank having been made aware of this situation of the banks uh, you know saying to british people living abroad you can't have a bank account anymore so <clears throat> excuse me and i am i do apologize if that's caused any anxiety that's not my game I'm, you know i don't want to do that we're about like facing the reality and finding some practical 
um, solutions. That's our basic premise here. So, you know, see what's going on, uh, meerkat style, don't stick your head in the sand, and then find positive ways of dealing with it as a collective here, as a community. And that's certainly what's been happening as far as I can see. And I think you're right, Ty. We do have to wait and see what happens. And we do live in these interesting times, don't we, where, <laughs> where you might expect communication and clarity. It's like, you know, this, this thing that happened since the 80s and 90s of, and, and from this golden age I was talking about in banking, where, you know, you would actually might shake the hand of a bank manager occasionally um, after a major groveling session. But anyway, um, people now do the jobs of four people, don't they? So that bank manager would have been marginalized out of the bank. The bank tellers would be doing his or her job. And instead of eight people working in that bank, there would be two or three. And it's no wonder now in, in the corporate world we've got that they are absolutely stretched to capacity. They've minimized everything and rationalized everything. They now have, not only are they doing the work of what five people used to do as one person, but now there's five times as much work, presumably. It's all gone up exponentially <laughs> because of all of these things happening. And they can't, they just don't have the capacity, I don't think, anymore to respond to to presumably people ringing from the UK. Can you imagine now? And we've all been conditioned, haven't we, to think, uh, whereas you know, 20 or 30 years ago, you might have said, I'll ring the bank and find out what's happening. And a human being would have answered. I said, I'm a bit worried about this thing about me not having a bank account. And they would say something like, well, um, we don't know yet, but we'll give you a call back when we know what's happening. Or just expect a letter. You know now that you can't ring up and speak to anyone anyway and find out what happens. So how do you find out what's going on with your bank? You read the newspaper or watch the telly to find out, and then you don't even know if that's fake news or scaremongering. What a world we live in. Yanis, my hero, says Gary, popular guy this morning. Um, it's called poverty, where you shout, <laughs> where the proverbial rolls downhill, and it's a pig that gets shouted at. It's called poverty. That's fantastic, Eugene. Have a great day, mate. Uh, transfer wise, may be the simple answer. A good, if quick, efficient, good exchange rate and low costs. Uh, and again, in that same vein, I would recommend Revolut. Worked beautifully for me, still does on occasion. Uh, Barclays just sent me a new Barclay card to my address here. So the corporations, I don't know, business as usual on the one hand and their heads in the sand on the other, mixing my metaphors. But you kind of, you'll find out when it happens, won't you? We'll find out when it happens. That's where we're at, guys. Um, Chris Law, hi, Malcolm here. That's confusing. Um, <laughs> hi, Malcolm here in Cavallero. We are with Millennium, great friendly branch. I even get a telephone call on my birthday. Awesome. Where would that happen in the UK? Um, well, I'll tell you how that might happen in the UK, uh, Malcolm. Um, some young intern will suggest um, in a marketing meeting, it'll be one of those really awful uh, corporate BS marketing meetings. It's like, okay, guys, uh, if I could have your attention, thanks for coming today for this brainstorming session of making banking more friendly and acceptable because we, the focus groups are telling us that it's really awful out there. People hate the banks. I can't understand why, but we've got to do something about it. And some young intern will put up their hand and say, I know, great idea, just going to run it up the flagpole, see what happens here. But um, I don't know why I'm talking like a hipster who might have avocado on rye bread in the morning, but here we go. Um, and an artisan cappuccino. Oh, no, not a cappuccino, a latte. Um, but, um, yeah, the intern says, I know, let's ring people on their birthday and offer them a cheap loan. Um, because, obviously, they'll be really anxious on their birthday, um, you know, another year under their belt. They'll feel like they're getting older. Yes, and health insurance and life insurance at the same time. And you get a birth, you get this is what British corporation banks will do is ring you on your birthday to remind you how old you're becoming and take that opportunity to sell you some uh, health insurance or life insurance and a loan if you need it to pay for your birthday celebrations. Um, so that's what would happen in the UK, I think, Malcolm, to answer your question. Uh, Carlos would also <laughs> always shake our hand. It's a nice touch, but not at the moment. It's going to be a, a, um, a fist pump or an elbow, an elbow five or whatever it's called. Uh, we would bring him a bottle of English beer, what we love about Portugal. That's fantastic. We, we need to get Carlos on the show. What a lovely fella. Um, talk tonight at the embassy. Yes, indeed. Thank you for that prompt. We are at the British Embassy tonight, folks. 
Um, let's have a look at if we can find this on the What's On Portugal calendar. Um, yes, here we go. Um, the Portugal calling tonight. This is where I'll be from eight o'clock um, talking to the British Embassy, no less. Um, me, Astrid and Jerry hosting a call tonight. Expats Portugal, pleased to have the British Embassy as our special guest in this Portugal calling online Zoom event. That's this evening, folks. And it's an RSVP. Don't get disappointed. Um, on the link here, I'll put that in the um, comments. You, need, you can't just turn up, as you might expect if it's the embassy, right? If you're British and have questions for the embassy about Brexit, residency, healthcare, exchanging driver's licenses, etc., this is the webinar for you. An open forum for our community to ask questions, get answers, and hear the latest updates that may affect your life living in Portugal. My goodness, I've just seen the time. I can't believe it. It's, it I'm trying to finish at 9.30. 9.45 is supposed to be the absolute limit. It's now 9.52. I'm so, yes, Alan, thank you, Alan. Uh, we'll call it a day there, um, and we'll, we'll come back to this because this is really, really good stuff. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry for the rather abrupt finish, but Alan's giving me the wink there. <laughs> cut the stream, Carl, cut the stream. Um, see you tonight on the um, Portugal Calling webinar with the British Embassy. Also, straight after that, yes, it will be recorded, Colin, uh, Colin by the way. Um, they are all, they're all turned into podcasts and um, YouTube uh, clips as well. Not clips, you, the full thing will be on YouTube. So yes, uh, and also at nine o'clock tonight, it's the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club, a fabulous, uh, where's it from? I don't know where it's from. I think it's an Alentejo White. Yes, it's an Alentejo White, um, reduced in continent at the moment. PM me if you want the link for that and you want to join us tonight. From 12.99 to 3.89, I think. Really looking forward to a crisp white tonight, having had the pleasure of the British Embassy uh, this evening. Uh, yes, it will all be recorded and will be available thereafter or join us live. Um, do do jump onto the um, link that I've put there and book yourself in on the call and you can ask um, the questions you want to ask in person this evening. Thank you so much and thank you for your forbearance and patience. I can't believe it. Seven minutes.